saw, dudes? Welcome back to another video. It has been about two weeks since the last time I picked up the camera. I did go ahead and get the fuel cell completely mounted off camera. There was just so many revisions that I went through doing that that it just didn't make any sense to do it on camera. I didn't necessarily have a good game plan going into it on how I was gonna do it, but I will go over that with you guys. I'm super pumped on the way it did come out, so we'll go through that. In this video, I am gonna be getting the truck pulled out um, and ready to get these bedsides mounted on the truck as you saw in the title of the video. So we'll get started with that, but let's go over the fuel cell and see how I got that all mounted. So the last thing you guys saw was this fuel cell just kind of sitting in the truck. I did go ahead and get kind of just a, a structure built underneath the fuel cell. Um, I started with these two tubes here, this uh, inch and a quarter tube, and then this inch and three quarter tube. And then I came in, added these tabs, um, to hold it in at the bottom just for moving back and forth and then we got the X put in there and then on the top side what I'll do is I'll get this fuel cell put in just to give you guys a better idea but there is three tabs that actually mount um, the top of the fuel cell and hold it down into place this is a side piece and then this is a piece that goes in the back I did take with everything added some overlay plates but you can see these two bolts uh, mount on the sides of the fuel cell these actually bolt into the bed cage to keep it planted. Now you can get a little bit better idea how this is held in. So like I was saying, there's two bolts here that actually mount to the fuel cell. That lines up with all these that are holding the lid of this fuel cell itself on. And then there's three bolts on each side that mount to the bed cage. And then right here in the center, we have one more that bolts to the fuel cell and then two more that come off the bed cage. So the way this is sitting in here right now, all these are just holding it straight down and on top of that cradle that you saw on the bottom of the fuel cell. And then on each side, you do have a plate that runs across here that keeps it from moving side to side. So it is locked in here super good. This fuel cell is not going anywhere. With everything nice and tight, this fuel cell is locked in. The purpose of this video is getting these bedsides mounted. This is a set of autofab uh, vessel style bedsides which are either a six inch bulge or a six and a half inch bulge it's the biggest style OBS F-150 bedside that you can get for the most part um, autofab is also known for super good quality glass so we're probably gonna end up taking the front corner of these and wrapping them around the edge of the the cab like we did on the 92 F-1 build um, so it's a nice seamless look there's no gap between the bedside and the cab um, but that's really gonna be determined on where the center of the wheel is in the wheel well. So I'm hoping we can do that, but I'm not gonna know until we start mocking everything up. But the next step for this thing is getting the truck actually pulled out. So I need to wait for my brother and my dad to get home. While I'm waiting, I'm probably just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna add some overlay plates right here, right where the bump stop comes down and lands on the upper arm. I'm gonna start making some templates and then uh, probably end up TIG welding this onto the upper arm just so it looks good. Just took a couple minutes and figured out exactly how I'm gonna do it. So. This is the template I came up with. I have gone over this before, that this template paper that I'm using is called Ramboard. You can get it at Home Depot, um, Lowe's, anywhere, any basically any hardware store. Um, this is perfect for making templates because it's nice and hard and it's not super thick like how just normal cardboard is. And you can get it in 50 foot rolls, 100 foot rolls, however you wanna get it. So it is relatively cheap too. So using this for templates is awesome. So we started with the template went to some eighth inch plate got that cut out got two of those cut out and then I got this side all tigged on all finished up so now when this bump stop comes and makes contact with this arm hopefully there's enough thickness here that even if this truck lands super hard off of something and smacks this really hard it's never gonna put a divot into this uh, upper arm or anything like that so my brother is here and my dad's here so we're more than likely gonna get the truck pulled out right now um, and then I'll do the other side once the truck's in going the other direction so So now that we got the truck turned around, I went ahead and got one of the bedsides just roughly mocked up. To do that, I took two pipe stands, one on the front and one on the back, and then just roughly centered 
the wheel well up on the tire, uh, just kind of how I wanted it. And then came up here to the front because this is going to be the biggest issue on this bedside is getting this to fit to the cab correctly. So as you can see, I got a couple lines drawn on here. And the way I found those is I just took a ruler and put it to the back of the cab here and just drew a straight line all the way across. So I knew that's where the leading edge of this would be. And then I took a piece of template paper and figured out the angle of the cab, just how it would sit on the cab when it was all said and done. And then just kind of drew a line off of the straight line that I had and figured that out. This right here, right at the door jam, is gonna end up being cut all the way down the bedside and it's not actually gonna overlap the door at all. So I do need to come in here and just cut out a shape that will clear this door handle first. And there's also an inside lip here that needs to be completely trimmed out. First initial cut fits real nice to the cab. Got it cut around the door handle here and it sits nice all the way along the door as well. I did notice that it's not sitting exactly where I wanted on the wheel well anymore. So I'm gonna have to push everything forward. So to do that, I'm gonna have to draw another straight line off of here, just kicked over a little bit more and then do the same thing, use my template to make another line. So I'm gonna do that right now, get it cut and then see how it fits. Ooh, what do we got? Another package from CarTech. Thank you, Tyler. That should be stuff for the bedsides, and we also got a filler neck and a bunch of stuff to get um, the filler neck set up, so that's rad. I did come in here. I cut actually on the second line that I made, um, and I noticed that it's actually not fitting as well as I wanted around the cab anymore, and that's because it's actually hitting this bed cage tube right here, so I'm gonna have to clearance that out a little bit to get this to fit better. Um, but once that's there, I should be able to uh, get this to fit nice and tight again. And then I'll be able to come in here on the door jam and start making my line all the way down. Sorry. Sorry. I just got that lip trimmed out. So it fits super nice against the tube. I'm probably gonna come in here a little bit more and take out just a little bit more so it's not actually touching the tube because it will make a bunch of noise when the truck's going through the dirt and stuff like that. I did get that trimmed. It fits way better right here. I went ahead off camera and got this line all cleaned up. You can see it's nice and tight to there. It's just roughly fit right now. It's not exactly how it's gonna be. I don't wanna go in here and get it flush to um, this lip yet, just because I don't know if I need to kick the bedside at all in the rear to get this body line to line up perfectly with the rest of the cab. So it does right now fit super nice all the way down as it is. So pumped on that, I can go ahead and start getting the bedside actually mounted to the truck now. Um, I have a bunch of fender washers I need to get mounted first and then we can start making the tube structure that mounts it actually to the truck. So I actually got the CarTech package all opened up uh, so I could show you guys what we're working with here. So this assembly right here, it's a tab and a bushing. Um, this is gonna be going off the bed cage somewhere down here. Uh, one on the top and one down here on the bottom. And what these will do is when the bedside's on the truck, it'll be isolated with the bushing so it won't have tendency to want to crack or do anything weird like that. Um, and then when this is sitting on here, the tube structure for the bedside will come off of here. And then when you want to pull the bedsides off the truck, you just pull this bolt out, the whole assembly comes out with the bushing, and then all you're left with is just this tab. Usually what people will do is they'll, instead of doing something like this, they'll have their tube structure actually welded directly to the bed cage. And then to remove the fender, they have to remove all the fender washers off the fender front and back, which is just a pain in the butt. And it looks super ugly when you have just the tube structure sitting here with no fender on it. So doing something like this is a lot cleaner because once you pull the bolt and the whole thing comes out, all you're left with is just the tabs sitting off the bed cage, which is the same thing that we did on the 92 F1 build. You can see right there, two tabs, same setup. So that will be similar on here. If you're curious what the part number is on all this stuff, the tab part number is right here. And then we also have our bushing assembly part number right there. 
all this stuff is from Cartech, like I said, so you just gotta jump on their website um, and then type that in. We actually have we actually have our own coupon code on Cartech now. It is Wings World, no spaces, nothing. Saves you a little bit of money, so make sure you put Tyler's name, um, Tyler Davenport, at the checkout and he'll throw in a bunch of stickers for you as like a little care package, so definitely do that. Uh, we also have our AutoFab fender washer kits that are gonna be mounting the fenders. It's a polyurethane uh, fender washer. We have a bolt, and a tab, and then we also, it comes with a nut. Cool part about these is the washers themselves have this piece on the back side. You can kind of tell right there. It's raised on the back, and this piece on the back side actually gets put into the fender um, and isolates it. So when you're working with fiberglass and you're mounting it, depending on if you're solid mounting it or this is the best case scenario right here, you're using a polyurethane bushing that's basically an isolator. Um, this will actually help prevent your fiberglass from cracking because the fiberglass wants to move and do a bunch of weird stuff when you're uh, going through the whoops or jumping the truck or whatever you're doing with it. We got 14 of those bad dogs right there. We also have some hose clamps for the filler setup, some aluminum tubing for the filler setup, and then we also have a Geyser Bros filler neck, which is also a dry break. Now that we actually have the fender washers here, I can go ahead and start marking the fender out for where I want them to actually sit on the fender. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take a level and put it on the body line here with the truck and put an angle finder on it and zero it out. That way when I come over here and bring the, the level up along the bedside, however far away from the edge I wanna come, um, I can go just straight 90 off of that because the truck isn't actually sitting level, it's hard to tell, but the truck isn't sitting level right now, so if I just went straight up with a normal level, it wouldn't be basically, it would, wouldn't look right on the fender. So that's the way I'm gonna do that. I'm not sure how far off of here I'm gonna come yet, but I know the structure that I'm gonna do um, on the front side of this fender to actually hold it on is gonna come off the cab. I did get these lines marked out on the bedsides. As you can tell, front and back. I am kind of jumping around a little bit though right now because to be quite frank with you, I am kind of scared to drill the holes in the bedsides and have them be off. I did go ahead and get the paint taken off the cab and I got a plate cut out. And as you can see, there actually is a nut on the back side of here, on the back side of the plate, and I welded it on in two places. Um, that's for a bolt that's gonna be able to go through, just like, boom, this guy right here. So you can see there's a bolt inside of there. And then I just took a piece of tubing and capped it off and drilled a hole in the end, um, just like this right here. This will have a, let me see, where is she at? We got a 5 8 bolt that goes down inside of there. And then that goes right into the cab like that. So when that's sitting in there, um, I'll be able to build the tube structure that's actually gonna come off of here to the fender. It's gonna be some one inch tubing that'll go from here off of this stub uh, to the fender itself. And then the fender washers and the, or the fender tabs um, will be off of uh, the one inch structure. So having two points actually welded to the cab like that is gonna be super strong. So I'm not worried about anything like that. Um, it's just a different way of doing things. And this is the first time I've actually done this. So I'm actually super happy with the way this is coming out so far.
getting back into the swing of things, I did do a montage on basically everything on this bedside while I was doing it because it is kind of tricky to get camera angles in here um, and just explain everything that I was doing while I was doing it. This video would have been extremely long. So I'll walk through everything with you guys right now just real quick and explain exactly why and how I did everything. So starting up at the front, you guys saw that I tacked these plates right to the cab and then came off with some inch and three quarter tubing that was capped and has a bolt through it. Uh, that threads into the cab and then I made the structure that comes off of that nice and parallel with the cab and then once I had that got the fender exactly where I wanted it um, just lined the body lines up and then kicked it as much as I wanted to to be able to clear the tire right here I did then come in drill the holes uh, mount the tabs off of there just took the tabs that came with the autofab fender washer kits and then put a little break in basically every single one of them and then coming back here to the rear what I did first was made sure that the fender was exactly where I wanted it and then check this line right here of the fender to this tube just to make sure everything was nice and parallel. Um, and then I came in, made this first tube basically just like the front side, made this first tube fit to the fender real nice on the inside and then uh, figured out what the length was to the tabs over here that come off the bed cage and then got this piece made, tacked those two together and then came in and made the bottom one. And for this bottom tube, you can see it's at the same level as this tube off the bed cage right here. I took an angle finder, figured out where that was, zeroed it out, and then came over here and made this one match exactly the same. So when you're looking from the back side of the truck, everything's nice and straight. And then same thing as the front came in, added the tabs. I actually did these. I wrapped them kind of around the tube and put the kick in them. I think it's just a little bit better because the tabs would have been real short if I came off this side and it's giving more surface area actually laying up against the fender itself, which is just a little bit more support. Another thing that you guys saw me do was I measured from this point here and then measured in and drew a line and then took a level and marked straight down and marked a line down on that tube too. And the reason for that was to be able to get these tabs in line with each other. So if you look right here, when you go right above them, they are directly in line with each other. And I figured that out by just roughly looking straight through here where all these fender washers are. And then just kind of looking over and just figuring out what measurement I wanted here. And it ended up being nine inches straight to the line from the edge of the bed cage. But it should be nice and easy to be able to now take both bolts out and then this whole thing will slide right off. And like I was saying before, it'll be a lot cleaner just having these tabs sitting here instead of having all this welded to the truck. The only other thing that I might add to these is gonna be a tube that comes from this junction right here down to basically where this tube ends on the bushing assembly. And the reason for that is to be able to just add some strength to the bedside here, um, just from letting it wanting to move up and down. I still need to do this whole other side though, so I'm probably gonna do that off camera and then come back and add those tubes to both sides at the very end. It's been about a week and a half since I last picked up the camera to film anything on this truck. And the reason behind that is because I've been running into a bunch of problems uh, getting these tires to fit inside of these fender wells. So I'll kind of go over that with you guys right now and get you all caught up on what's been going on on this thing. As you can see, the truck is now a low rider. <laughs> I did get everything down to full bump just to see how the tires clear to the fenders. And spoiler alert, they don't clear. So the issue is with 40 inch tires and no frame rail in here, they got as much up travel as they possibly could out of this rear end, um, which is good. You definitely want more up travel than not enough. Um, but with production style glass like this and this big of a tire, you run into issues with clearance. So these bedsides were never made to run really a 40 inch tire and this whole situation going on here. So you can see the top side of the tire is basically eating out the top of the fender here and the inside of the fender on this side too. And the main issue is, is this body line right here, it divots in to follow the body line of the truck. And the front side of the tire, you can't tell back here because the bedside is kicked quite a bit. So there is a little bit of distance here, but in the front side of the tire, it's getting really close to that body line. So it's definitely not ideal. I had to kick these bedsides a lot more than I thought um, to get everything to clear correctly. So I've had to remount these bedsides quite a few times, but you can see the fender is kicked quite a bit further out in the rear compared to the front. 
um, to the tire and that is the only way that you're going to be able to clear a tire like this with these bedsides so I do have these tubes in here on both sides now everything's tacked together it's nice and tight um, all I need to do now is I'm probably going to end up pulling the fenders off and then going ahead and welding all this together front and back and then I will come in here and clearance out this front side of the fender because it still is making contact. I need to give at least a half inch of clearance to the tire and that's going to mean a lot of trimming here. So. Everything is back assembled back here now and welded up. Super happy with the way all this stuff came out. Now that these fenders are all back on the truck, I can go ahead and start trimming stuff out. Like I was saying before, right here to the tire is still touching, so I need to come in and trim that out. Last night I did come in here and get the door jams all cleaned up. So both sides do open up nice and easy now. And this morning I came in here already and got this side clearanced out, uh, just roughly where the tire was getting close to it. You can see there's fiberglass all over there and all over myself. So from here to here, that's basically where the tire is getting the closest. So I'm probably gonna end up going all the way to the body line right here, this like little lip, and I'll take that completely out, but I'm just gonna gradually start working my way up to there so I don't take out too much. Well, just as I thought, we went all the way to the, the lip on the front side of the fender. I just slowly worked my way out to it just to make sure the tire would fit properly and that's where it ended up being. So the fender actually tucks the beadlock ring on this thing at full bump, which is pretty baller. I don't think I've ever seen that before. So that is pretty dang cool. That's probably gonna wrap it up for this video. We did get these bedsides completely installed. It did take a little bit of time, but they are completely on now and everything's good to go. So if you guys liked it, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.